Welcome to the Break Testing and Analysis webinar presented by DeweySoft USA. In today's webinar, we will discuss DeweySoft's easy to use measurement system for brake testing and ABS testing according to ECE, ISO, FMVSS, and SAE international standards. We will present how our test system offers automated workflow and demonstrate how flexible and robust it is for brake R&D, brake comfort, and vehicle testing with regenerative braking. At the end of this session, we will have a time of live Q&A. We will begin after the 40 second countdown. So warm up your coffee, grab a snack, and enjoy today's webinar with your technical lead, Nina Kovac. Hi, my name is Nina and I'm an application engineer here at the Davis of Slovenia. And today we are going to take a look at the brake testing and brake noise applications. So in the beginning, we will discuss general, general stuff around brake noise, brake testing and brake noise. And also then we will take a look at hardware and software that Davisoft is using for such purposes. Then we will move directly to our software, make few make few quick setups and perform a, a simple measurement. So let's start with the presentation. Um, so brake test. Brake testing is used to measure speed and distance while braking. In general, it is used in different industries, but usually it is applied when customers are testing or optimizing brake components, ABS and ESP systems, and also it is often used in tire testing. Together with Devisoft Hardware, hardware uh, brake test plugin is Devisoft simple solution for performing quick brake tests, where the software basically leads you all the way through the measurement. It is really easy to set it, set it up and start measuring right away. So how the brake testing process looks like. First, you define inputs for brake tests, which are <clears throat> velocity, distance, and acceleration uh, that you get out of your GNSS device. Then you set brake test conditions, define also outputs you want to have, and you can start measuring. So how the basic data acquisition uh, system setup looks like. As I said before, you need a GNSS device to, that, that provides you uh, your input data. With Devisoft, you can use VGPS or e IMU devices, uh, which both have uh, GPS rece uh, G uh, GNSS receivers inside, uh, and IMU um, devices also has in in inertial sensors, uh, where you can uh, where you can also get, uh, for example, a pitch uh, information out of it. Uh, you can um, with um, basic setup, you usually use also brake switch to trigger the start of braking. Uh, you can add a display for a driver to monitor the speed and number of satellites. Uh, here you can choose between VGPS display, which is a smaller one, and DS display, which is 12 inch display. Uh, and also you need a PC uh, with the Davisoft X software installed and also Davisoft brake test plugin added to your software. Additionally, you can measure any analog or digital inputs. So if you have any device with an analog or digital channels, you can measure this. Here uh, we are recommending using a DV43 or a serious device uh, where you can uh, also acquire additionally video or CAN, CANFD, uh, FlexRay, XCP, and you can also get uh, that over XCP. Also, those um, what's great about it here, uh, the channels are scalable from 8 to 1,000, so you can have as many data as you want, basically. Uh, and also, you can add the device of SNET for remote control and remote storing of the data. So, as I said before, 
you need to uh, um, to define some inputs for brake test, which are velocity, distance, and acceleration. Then you define start trigger and stop trigger for brake test. And also you define outputs where you can choose start speed, stopping time, distance, different decelerations. Um, and for example, MMDD, which is usually taken as an average deceleration between 80% and 10% of the test start speed. Uh, additionally, out, additional outputs can be also defined with MAT, uh, with MAT um, module, where you can add braking efficiency calculations, maximum values, and this MAT, um, MAT module is also um, installed already together with Devisoft X, so you have already it inside and you, you can use it. I will move now directly to the Devisoft software to show you a basic setup and perform measurement. So here is the Devisoft X software. Um, first, I will explain why I have vehicle simulation and polygon here. Uh, I have added under options and settings as extension. I have added vehicle simulations and poly vehicle simulation polygon to the to the system. As I will, it it will be easier for me to perform some demo without any equipment installed. So, as a vehicle simulation, we will define a car which will will be moved over the keyboard with, and it will output different channels: so latitude, longitude, heading, and so on. So now we can go in Polygon, we can add a car, for example. So vehicle, vehicle one, we can we can rename it if we want. We will we will define it as a moving with latitude. Uh, these channels are defined um, from vehicle simulation that we added, longitude and heading. So basically that's it. Now we have now we have a moving car. So camera follow the car if we drive around like this. Okay. So how do we add a brake test? Brake, brake, now I have already one brake test inside, but I will add, but the brake test is generally, generally added here. And uh, under, you, you click on more, add brake test, and you have the second brake test added. So if you don't have the brake test, um, tab here, it will automatically um, pop up as you add a brake test. So we will um, remove that one. Okay. Okay. So um, here we have first brake test uh, where where you have to define inputs as we, as we were talking about before. So you define velocity from uh, the velocity channel, distance, and acceleration. Then here you have the brake test settings, and you can choose uh, between brake test and acceleration test calculation types. So if you're braking, you choose brake. If you're accelerating, you choose accelerate. Um, then you have to define start conditions where you can choose speed trigger, start of movement, or speed from channel. You can define any speed from a channel if you have any other channel that you have your velocity on. Then you define start value. Also, you can you do the same with the stop condition, define the trigger that you want or distance or speed, and then you add also a value to that parameter. Uh, so basically we can start measuring now. We go to the measure and we start storing uh, override, yes. Uh, here we have added a recorder display. Uh, we, ha we also have five digital meters and the tabular values display where we will represent all of the brake test uh, results. And also here we have a polygon added as a widget, uh, just to preview if we are driving or not. So now we have some velocity, as we see, we are already moving. Okay, now I'll, I'll just accelerate. And at 80, we can see that the measure that the measurement is start uh, it's ready to go so we can start performing braking and as i break now at 80 start condition was uh, so we will stop now uh, so here we can see at 80 um this, this the brake test condition was was true, so the trigger went up. So on the second level, okay, we have to go and analyze not to do that. 
So as I said before, at 80, we started breaking. Uh, we started basically breaking at, if we move that channel. So here, so at 150, for example, we started breaking. So at 80, we got to the first trigger. So the break testing measurement started. And at 10, which was our stop condition, it stopped. So here we will, so what was the break distance? We can see at the end of the measurement. Before we cannot see the values here, okay? But at the end we have all the single values, break test, a time, break test, distance. So um, now we go to tabular values display and we can add time, distance, velocity acceleration uh, based on time reference. So here we can see that we have only two values for now. Why two? Because the, the reference, our reference now it's time and it's based only in one second. And because the break test was long, only one and a half second, we cannot get any more data. So now we are in analyze mode and we can just offline, uh, we can just do uh, an offline change. We will set, this is, so that one second was based on the time reference that we have defined here. So we have Delta T1 now. Uh, so we will change it on 0 0.1. If we go back to review, we can recalculate this. And as we see, we got, we got many more results. Okay, if we zoom in a bit. As we see for, for, for break tests, we got different values based on 0 0.1 uh, delta t. So those are the results. Here have time, uh, time reference uh, distance that was at 0 0.5, uh, 0, 0 0.5 second uh, length of the break test. Then you, have, um, then you have also velocity that was there and also acceleration that was deceleration basically. Um, Okay, now we can, if we go back to measure, okay. We can, for example, change here to a trigger. So we will define a trigger based on throttle position. So we added here, so here we added formula and we have added um, this one. I'll just show you this one. So we have added a condition if, so if the throttle is below the zero, uh, the, the value of this channel, so the trigger, trigger output channel will be one, and otherwise it will be zero. So if we start breaking and the throttle is below the zero, it will, um, it will display con condition one. So basically this is the same as you have a brake switch. If you start breaking, you, you get a signal of a one. As a start condition, we change to a trigger now. Okay, we add a trigger level of zero five. Also, we have start stop condition at 10. So if we go to measure now again, start storing. If we add those again, time. Oh, I didn't say before you have time reference here. You have also distance, you can define a distance as a reference. So for example, distance times velocity acceleration, also velocity. <laughs> now we have defined one meter uh, distance, so we can see the result, results of break test on a one meter um, basis. Um, so uh, what's the difference here and before then? Now as, we, as, as soon as we, start, we, we stepped on the brake paddle, the trigger was triggered and the brake test has started. So and at the end of the, like when we got to the 10 uh, kilometers per hour, the brake test stopped. Uh, also, you can define different, uh, now we are also in uh, offline mode, so we are in analyzed mode now. We can also uh, define other output values. 
So we can, for example, define start speed, stopping time additionally. Th those are both single values. Uh, corrected break distance, which is we have, if we have a speed condition here, and we have a start value at 80, we can correct it from, if we are interested in what's the distance, if we start breaking at 60, we just type in a 60. We can also add, add MFDD, break, different break decelerations, so and so on. This is what we talked about before. So basically that's it for a break test application. And now we will move um, back to our present PowerPoint presentation. As, as I said before, you can, uh, you can customize your measurement screen if you want. You can add different outputs, different displays. Also, what is interesting here, uh, you can make uh, automatic report, uh, which is based on measurement screen and automatic export to Excel or automatic export to Excel, which is based on predefined Excel template. What is also great about the break test that Davisoft has a built-in sequencer for a completely automatic break test pr procedure, which offers automatic uh, report generation and data export at the end of the test. So this is pretty useful because the test driver doesn't need to do anything. You just make a sequence, you run it, and you can perform measurements one, one after another. So what are, what are those data system advantages? Uh, you can have data files available for later analysis in case of an accident, for, the, for example. You can have automated brake testing. Uh, you can track position of vehicle remotely. Also, you can remote, uh, remotely store the data over DevSoftNet. You have different options to add uh, any other sensors, for example, temperature, pressure, load sensors, and, uh, and basically anything you want uh, to measure. Uh, you can also uh, make custom can, can calculations uh, inside MET, uh, MET module and calculation parameters can be changed in already recorded data files as we did that before. So once you, you measured your data, you can simply recalculate everything later and add different parameters. For additional parameters for further information can be, can be acquired as well. So for example, temperature, torque, torque for braking balance, pressure of walls, boosters, ABS pump, brake noise frequency, environmental pollution, model analysis. So, okay, now we got to brake noise. The purpose of brake noise plugin is detection of brake noises caused by me mechanical vibration on the braking system. So there is a brake noise plugin detects and compares the sound of and acceleration frequency spectrum and like that determine only uh, the brake noise events without any background or any other unwanted environmental noise. It was made based on VDA 303 guideline and the real advantage of brake noise plugin is a straightforward setup process and its flexible configuration. The plugin is mostly meant for mechanical braking systems where the friction force is mainly applied and it's always opposite in the direction of the movement. So on the image, we have a braking disc, which, which is rotating in the direction of the wheels. And when the pressure is applied on the friction material, this causes friction force, which has an opposite direction to the rotation. So during the braking, kinetic energy is converted mainly to thermal energy. So this is a bit about braking. In terms of construct, uh, construction, we mostly encounter two types of brakes. So those are disc brakes and drum brakes. They're both still used in different areas, and even though they have different principles of braking, they both have similar problems with brake noise. Brake noise is undesirable as it causes environmental noise pollution. It, redu it reduces the comfort of vehicle occupants and people around the machine or vehicle, or it can be regarded as a fault by users, even if the system braking performance is not impacted, which normally is the case. So if, you're, if your braking system emits the noise, the braking performance can still be normal. So on a new vehicles and new machines, this causes uh, warranty claims, which are in fact really expensive for manufacturers. We can group brake noises in different categories based on what effect causes the noise or the vibration. So here we have jolly groan, hum, moan, 
squeal, squeak, squeech, and wire brush. Where, where is the brake squeal the most intuitive and has the biggest impact? So in following presentation, I will mostly refer on a brake squeal as it's easier for me to talk in the context. How we detect the brake noise. For example, if we put a microphone inside a cabin, and additional, we mount the, uh, the accelerometer on a brake pad, out of this, we can get time domain signals of sound pressure and, uh, and acceleration on the brake pad. But with that, we cannot do much because we cannot determine if we hear the squeal or if the sound was caused by vibrations that we measured and so on. That is why we apply an FFT, which transforms the time domain signal to frequency domain signal. And by that, we can get spectrums of, so of sound and spectrums of acceleration which are then inside Devasoft compared when in, with intention to find similar peaks in both spectrums. So with the brake noise plugin, we do exactly this, compare those two spectrums, but along different Fourier transforms, which are calculated constantly. And by that, we count the number of noise events and uh, uh, that occurred during the braking. There are also a few calculations that can be done inside brake noise plugin. We have two, uh, basically we have two types of statistics. First, it's squeal statistics and second, it's sound statistics. With squeal, squeal statistics, we calculate and output um, parameters like sound and acceleration amplitude, frequency statistics, even duration, start time and end time, for example. And also we have channel statistics where we can perform statistics for any of channel. And we can, for example, cal cal calculate average temperatures, velocity, they are globally defined. Here's the brake noise plugin. Uh, brake noise plugin is also added the same as the vehicle simulation in Polygon R. So as it is an extension, you add it under settings. You have to download it first from our website and you go to extension and add it as extension as the brake noise. Brake noise. Okay. So now here I have prepared um, some user inputs um, that I will use in the brake noise of the simulation and demo so I can show you everything. Uh, so first, uh, let's set up the FFT first directly. So here we have, uh, here you can pick the proper windowing and all of those are relevant to the brake, field, to the brake field applications. Then you can also uh, select the sizing uh, of the FFT by selecting the number of lines, the delta frequency and the duration of the FFT. Also, you can define an overlap here uh, and sound weightening can be defined here as well. So every microphone that you're using can be weighted with just one setting. So usually we want each microphone to be weighted for a human ear. So we usually select the A weighting. Here you have a set, a set up for noise detection, uh, which is mostly based on minimum and maximum frequency. Uh, so on the top, you have to define the range in where you are interested in to detect the squeal event. And then below, you can define the maximum and absolute gap and maximum relative gaps. And those two gaps basically de determine if two peaks belong to the same squeal event or not. The next is really simple cor correlation. So max sound and acceleration gap. So here determine if the peaks of the sound acceleration are close enough. If they are, that is observed at, then as a squeal caused by mechanical vibration. And if they are not, something else is probably causing the sound. The next thing is here you can define a threshold. So for every sound and acceleration input, you can also define a threshold. I think it's the best if I just show the, the presentation now. Okay, so you will know what is that. So below the threshold, threshold value, the peaks are undetermined. undetermined and are not calculated in the squeal event calculation and detection. So usually we have the sound and sound stress threshold for the cabin, which is normally defined with 35 dBA and with 70 dBA the sound outside the vehicle is usually de defined then. Now we only have to define the inputs and statistics for the measurement. In general, you are defining channel groups. So we have two different types of channel groups. So we have global and local channel groups. 
Under global groups, we usually define the cabin microphone that is going to be used in all of the calculations. And on the other side, we have local channel groups that are valid for a single brake assembly or a brake system where you define the local accelerometers and microphones. Uh, also, you can, uh, you can define channel statistics which are true or valid for the whole vehicle under global group statistics. So, for example, if average vehicles, uh, for example, you can add average vehicle speed or environmental temperature. I'll add like this one. So here do we have global global groups and local groups, and we can add many local groups basically. So we can have two, three, four, five, six. Um, and under global, we usually select the. We can add different channels. So we, here we have selected the cabin sound from our user input that we have defined. And we have also added a channel statistic. So uh, we have defined it as velocity. So we will output average velocity value. Uh, so under local group, we have added, for example, if we have a channel of a front, uh, if you are, we are measuring front left wheel of, on the car, we, we have placed acceleration, uh, acceleration sensor and a microphone near there. So we will define this as a local group. So we will add acceleration front left input as an accelerometer. And on the lo local microphones, we will add um, uh, local inputs, uh, microphone input on front left wheel, so sound front left. Here we can also define the statistics. Here we can have chosen at the, uh, that we want to output sound amplitude, average sound amplitude and sound frequency. Also, we are interested in the ratio of the brake noise, and we also want wants to count the numbers, uh, the number of noise events. We can go to measure now, and now we will just um, so here. So here we have. Uh, a recorder display, uh, recorder display, 2D graphs of cabin sound spectrum, sound from front left wheel spectrum, and acceleration front left, front left wheel spectrum. So if we maximize the amplitude now to move over the threshold, and all of those, like this, and we will change the frequency now here. Okay. Like this. And now, as we will move the acceleration front left uh, value, we will see when the when the software will start to, starts to count um, our noise events. So, if they are equally spaced near, they will they will be counted. So, as you can see, we are getting data. We're getting data from our measurement. So this is the basic principle how the uh, brake noise works. Here we are outputting uh, again on a tabular values, values display our time, sound amplitude, sound frequency, counter, and duration. Duration. So this is this is this uh, tabular value, value display is valid for cabin sound. So this is compared. Uh, between cabin and the, so the cabin microphone and acceleration front left, um, front left uh, acceler accelerate, accelerometer. And here we have the values that are output for a microphone placed on front left wheel. And also that is, uh, so the spectrum that it's made there. And so the, that spectrum is compared to the accelerate, acceleration spectrum on front left wheel. So, when we are close, we are getting the, our data. So when we are close the other one, we are getting the data for the cabin sound spectrum. So, so we basically, we, we hear squeal, squeal, uh, squeals now. So um, the best is if I just show you the, um, the one data file from a real, uh, from a real measurement. Okay, so how, so here I have a data file where we were measuring the brake noise of my car on the front left, front right wheel. 
so what we did, we placed an accelerometer on a brake pad and we placed a microphone, a local microphone in near the, in near the wheel. So in this case, we didn't have a global microphone installed inside the cabin, but only, only the local ones. So here we have a microphone sound spectrum and acceleration spectrum from acceleration sensor. And as we, here we have also a GPS uh, map. And, and as we were driving, in the beginning, we didn't, ha we didn't hear any squeals. Okay, we are accelerating now. And as we started braking, uh, the brake started to produce noises. And as we can see here at 15,000, 15,000 uh, hertz, we, we do get uh, squeals out of, the, out, of the, out of the wheel. And also we can see here at a counter value that uh, we are counting, counting those noise events. So this is basically the real, we are not tracking now as we don't have any, any pairs. So here at the end, we, when we started breaking, we, we hear the squeals again. So basically that's it. It's simple to set it. It's simple to set both of the measurement up. There are a few you, you rules with global and local groups. So inputs and statistics are defined in channel groups. So, and each microphone or accelerometer channel will generate, generate only one FFT output. Uh, statistics are outputs for each microphone and accelerometer pair. So if you have a global and uh, one global and one local group, so you have one global mic and one local mic and one local accelerometer, then you will get outputs for combination for global and local global microphone and local accelerometer and also local accelerometer and local microphone. So basically two pairs. As I said now, yeah, global microphones are paired with all accelerometers in local groups. So you can have only one global microphone and one local accelerometer without a local microphone. So global channel statistics are also calculated on all squeal pairs. Only local pairs are calculated all on local pairs. So that's it. So this is the example that we showed. This is all for this presentation. I hope you enjoy it. I hope everything was clear. So if you if you will have any other questions, uh, let me know. Uh, you can write on uh, on our support. So yeah, thank you for listening to me and have a nice day. Bye. Thanks, Nina. Okay, everybody. Now it's your turn. On the line with us right now are several DeweySoft experts to field your questions. So using the chat option of your webinar viewer, please type your questions and send them our way. We will field as many questions as we can. If there are any that remain unanswered at the end of this session, we will do our best to reach out to you directly. And with that, I'll hand it over to our applications engineers.